Hey everybody, this is Lucas Carpenter coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee, and today I am going to show you how to turn one of these, a Korg Nano Controller, into one of these! Ta-da! A foot controller for hands-free use with programs such as Ableton Live and Logic. So building one of these all came about because I'm a touring singer-songwriter and I've been doing looping stuff for about six years. Started out with a Digitech Jam Man, then started using a Boss RC50, and then I wanted to go into the world of software-based looping because there's a lot more you can do. It's kind of limitless what you can do with programs like Ableton Live. The only problem is I need something that I can operate with my feet because I need my hands to play other instruments. There's a few USB foot pedal controllers available on the market, but most of them are really expensive and they don't have a whole lot of features. You could go the route of using a MIDI pedal, but a lot of times you need the correct interface. You also might have to program it. There might be other software involved and it can kind of be a headache. So doing a little bit of research, I discovered that you can actually build one of these fairly simply on your own. Let me preface this by saying I'm not an electrician, nor am I a computer programmer, so I will try to explain this stuff as best I can. Now I'm not going to get into a whole lot about soldering techniques, there's lots and lots of videos and information online about the best ways to solder, but I will show you a few things really quick that I used for this project as far as soldering that you might need yourself. Obviously you need solder, we got some different kinds of solder right here, a soldering iron with a holder and a little sponge right there to clean it off. Uh, I got some different size wire right there, different spools. Uh, I got some wire strippers, wire cutters, some flux. Flux paste is great, uh, helps you make better connections. Uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol works very well to clean off your flux once you make the connection because it over time uh, the flux can actually uh, damage your connections. I also used a little Dremel tool like this. You can also use sandpaper or an emery board. This is for like nail filing. You can use this to help scrape off residue or any paint around the soldering points uh, before you solder to make it, make it a little cleaner connection. And then a bunch of momentary push buttons. There's tons of different kinds of little buttons you can use. These ones I got at Radio Shack. They were two for like three or four bucks. Uh, they seem pretty sturdy. I don't know. We'll see if they actually hold up. You can get arcade buttons. Uh, just look online for momentary push buttons. You'll find them. The first thing you need is you need a brain. You need something that can communicate with your computer via USB. There's a couple options as far as your brain. Some people use Arduino boards or something similar. Uh, the only problem with that is there, uh, there's a fair bit of coding and different things that are involved with that, and honestly, it's kind of beyond what I can do. A lot of people actually use video game controllers, USB-connected video game controllers. There's a lot of information online about how to do it with one of these little guys. A lot of people also take these and make them into arcade controllers, like real big arcade controllers. Just look it up, because it's kind of cool. It's pretty awesome. But I found that the easiest way to make one of these things is to start with something that can already communicate with Ableton Live. As long as it's got the driver for the nano controller, you're good to go. All you're doing is rewiring these buttons and these faders and knobs and making them bigger. How do you do that? Here's how. So the nano controller here only has a few main components. It's got various push buttons and then it has knobs and faders. Both the knobs and faders are called potentiometers or variable resistors. We're primarily going to be using the push buttons, so let me explain how those work. Each of these push buttons has two sides to it, okay? Picture a wire here, this is a wire here. And then you want to bridge these two together. When they get bridged together, it turns on, it goes on on, 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 and sends a tiny signal to your computer that will turn on whatever thing you map that to do. When you press one of the buttons down, it's got a tiny black dot of conductive material, and that black dot presses against those two, those two mixed circuits. Instead of having a little tiny rubber button, you're going to replace the button and this thing that bridges the circuit with one of these. A momentary push button. It's got two sides on it, each one of these little guys goes to each one of these, connecting the two together, beep, 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 and there you go, there's your push button. Here's a tip. Do not use velocity sensitive keys or pads. They're really hard to rewire. You want to stick with non-velocity sensitive pads and keys because they're simple components and they only have two sides. So I've already unscrewed this thing, so let's just take this thing apart. And be, be very careful when you take this apart. You don't want to damage the little guy. Ah. This is what it looks like inside. Be very careful as to not damage the actual chip 
and especially the components that stick out, like these little LEDs. And also, once you take this thing out, you can see that's the USB connector. And it sticks out, and it's pretty fragile, so you want to be careful with that. This is your brain. When you take one of the little pads off, that's what it looks like inside. And that little tiny black dot is the conductive material that goes against that little thing that looks like a zipper. It goes against that and bridges the circuit together. Now, those are the things that you're going to want to solder. Now, if you see the tip of my pencil, these are super tiny. These things were not built to be resoldered. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find the easiest place to resolder and connect your button to. Rule of thumb, just if you follow these little wires, you can see different places that they end up going and you can actually find better places to solder. For example, there's this little tiny diode up here. Now, you want to be careful when you're soldering that because that little guy is important. But on the side of it right there, there is a much bigger surface than one of these little tiny wires. So instead of trying to scrape up one of those little tiny wires and solder to it, you can actually solder right there to that little guy and it'll be a little bit easier. Also, if you follow the other side down, so see, it goes dee 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 dee. It goes right there. I've, also, I've already scratched off a little bit of that paint. I used a little tiny Dremel tool like this and just kind of rubbed it to scrape off a little bit of surface area to be able to solder. If you flip the circuit board over, you can find other points at which you can solder that might make it a little easier. I'm just using these top buttons, and I'm actually only using the top eight buttons, not the ninth button. But again, you can use as many or as few of them as you want. So I have plugged in my USB connector, and I'm actually on scene two. The little LED will light up. One of the things that you can do that will really help you experiment is every single one of these little buttons has an LED. That's, that's a, that little tiny thing in the middle there, that's an LED. If you put this thing back on there and you press it down, it lights up. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So you can use this as a way to kind of experiment and figure out where are the best places to actually connect your wiring. So to test it out, I got one piece of wire here. And I'm going to poke one end into that little hole right there. And again, I scraped off a little bit of the surface so uh, it makes it more conductive. And then I'm going to touch this side right here to this diode and I'm going to see if it lights up. Ta-da! Bam! Then you know it will work. So as you can see, I have now soldered a wire from this one over here to this diode. And I have soldered the other end to that little connector. And again, one side is on one end of the zipper, one is on the other side of the zipper. So now, let's test it out. And again, this is just plugged in. This isn't in Ableton Live yet, it's just plugged directly into the USB connector. And again, do not solder while it's plugged in. Unplug it, solder, then test it. Now, press the button. Yeah! The LED lights up. So that means that this push button will work. Ta-da! So here's a tip where the wire goes in again. These are There's little tiny, tiny, tiny holes. And this wire that I'm using here is like 30 gauge wire. It's like super, super thin. So you guys might be able to use a thicker wire, but I found that this you can actually poke through the board. So I poked it through that hole. And if you flip it over on the other side, that's actually where I soldered it. I soldered it right there. I scraped a little bit off, and it was a little bit easier to solder on this side. So a super cool feature that the Nano Controller has is it's got this scene selector, okay? It's got four different scenes, and they have little LED lights, and you're going to want to rewire those LEDs and use this scene button. Every single one of these buttons, every single one of these knobs will change if you switch to scene two. It basically shifts and makes all of these have a completely different functionality. So you can do that four different times. So basically what that means is if you press this button here on scene one, this can activate, say, you a distortion. If you press scene two and you press that same exact button, you could use it to activate some other effect or to launch a certain clip or whatever. And it's the same thing with the knobs and the faders. Scene one, you could have this knob activate panning left, left and right, 
and then if you press on scene 2, that same exact knob could uh, do a filter or whatever you want it to do. So whichever knobs, whichever buttons you choose to use, if you put the scene selector on your pedal and designate that to its own button, then it can times everything you do by four. And you can have a very small pedal, but actually, you can actually have a huge variety of things that that pedal can do. One thing to keep in mind, though, is these six buttons right here will not change when you change the scene. These are universal. So no matter which scene you're on, they will stay the same. And I would suggest using a few of these buttons and maybe using one for a stop button or one for a play button. And then those will be universal no matter which scene you're in. So these buttons can change and be moved around, but these buttons will always stay the same whichever you map them to originally. It's a pretty cool feature. Keep that in mind. You're going to want to remove these four LEDs to be able to reroute them on your pedal board. Again, you press it and it changes the scene. So if you flip it over, don't mind that, it's kind of crusty because I had removed that earlier. Uh, each LED has two little connector points. If you lay the soldering iron kind of flat against them, you can heat them both up at the same time and then be very, very careful because they're not, they're, they're kind of fragile, uh, but you'll want to pull on them just a little bit as they heat up and then they should just pop right out. And then you are going to want to put a piece of wire down in there and solder the wire and rewire it to your pedal board. And if you notice on each of these LEDs, one side is flat. Uh, there's a little flat side and then the other side is round. The flat side is negative, the round side is positive, and you want to make sure that you wire them to the corresponding side. Now you're going to want to have some kind of case to house your pedal. Uh, some people use pre-made boxes, some people even use tackle boxes. You can use like thin little tackle boxes, that way you can open them up and work on the circuits. I decided to build my own. Uh, I built this little box here, as you can see, do, 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 do. and I put some hinges on it, that way it can open up, and then you can, as you can see inside of it, I made it so uh, the chip will be able to fit in there properly. Uh, you're going to obviously have to secure it so it doesn't move around. And then on this side there is a little tiny square where the USB is going to go. And then you can mess around with all the components, wire it, do all that kind of stuff, and then be able to seal it. I made it so I can have six buttons going across, six buttons on the top. Obviously you want to make sure that you drill holes proper, the proper size to be able to fit these little guys in there. There's four little tiny holes that are going to be able to fit the LEDs for the scene selector. This button right here uh, will be the scene selector button. So when you press that down, those LEDs are going to change and it will actually change all of these eight buttons over here. These three buttons I'm going to make to be those universal buttons. Maybe one will be play, stop, and they won't change when you press the scene button. But again, these eight will change. So you got eight buttons times four is 32 different button options. Pretty awesome. Pretty simple. Make a box, drill some holes, put a bird on it. Here's what it looks like with the buttons attached. Uh, if you look inside, uh, you can see they're all screwed in there, ready to go. Depending on what kind of buttons you use, some of them you won't be able to actually solder until they're actually connected to your box first. And then you can open it up and solder them. All right, and now as you can see, I have everything wired together. Uh, Look inside the box, you can see where all the buttons are attached and the wires are connected there. If you look closely, you can see where I attached said wires. Do, do, do. Notice they're all attached to those little diodes. And uh, this jumble right here is uh, the LEDs. If you notice right here where this LED used to be, uh, I had to route it a different way. It's still on the pedal. Uh, but I accidentally broke off a little bit of the connection, the little metal connective material. It's really frail, so uh, be very careful when you're kind of clearing them off and making more room for the solder. Also, with these little, uh, with these particular buttons over here, these kind of universal buttons, um, their diodes have matching numbers. So if you see S4 here connects to diode 4. And uh, again, just kind of test test the stuff, test the stuff out, and see what lights up and what doesn't. And that way, you can you know kind of tell easier ways to route them together. Uh, all these, I'm using three of these buttons here attached to these 
four, well technically it's four I guess, because this scene button is here, S7, D7, they correspond. And then uh, these three here are connected to three of the other ones up here. Quick tip, you may have noticed that I only have one of these guys, one side of this thing, uh, these ones have no other connections, just those diodes there. That's because I discovered that these are actually grouped together. These four are grouped together um, and they share what I'm assuming is a ground, honestly, I'm not really sure. Don't dislike the video just because I don't really know what I'm talking about. But uh, they do share a uh, one of the sides they share, it's like a common side. So you only have to route one of those for the four of them. So what I actually did is, in the box, I connected, I don't know if you can see it here. So in the box, I actually connected one side of each of them all together and then just routed one, bam, right there. And then that way they all work. They'll all work, do, do, do. They'll all work just routed to that one little side. And again, I think that might be a ground, I'm not really sure. Um, but again, if you experiment with them, test them out and see which ones light up, and uh, you can, you know, that's the easiest way to figure it out. Also, I found that these four over here act the same way. Um, so I just connected, because they all run to the same, like this side, all, it all runs to the same connection. So I discovered that you can you, you just have to put in one for these four and then the rest can go to those little diodes. Hope that makes some sense. <laughs> this thing's probably not built to be stepped on. So I wanted to build a little shock absorber thing here. Uh, these are just these grippers that I found at uh, like Lowe's or Home Depot and uh, they're meant to be to go on the bottom of like chair legs which I'm actually going to be putting these on the bottom of this thing too so it doesn't slip around on the floor. I took a razor and kind of sliced them like halfway through right there. Made a little bit of a squishy, squishy thing so when I screwed in the chip they kind of have a little bit of a squish. You don't want to crack this circuit board so be really careful when you know there's already pre-made holes uh, that you can that you can screw little screws in. But don't screw them too far because you could end up cracking the board and you don't want to do that. Also bear in mind, some of these wires, I use like 30 gauge wires, they're really, really thin. They're like the size of like a, a twist tie that you use uh, for like bread. <laughs> so they're really, really thin, uh, you know, they, they don't take a whole lot of, um, you know, bending before they do snap. So you want to be really careful with them and make sure that when you do end up closing uh, the box, that none of the wires get too squished and they will, you know, fit fit nicely. So the front panel looks like this. Don't mind the not so great paint job thus far. And uh, up here, this button is the scene selector. Ta-da! So this button used to be right there, and now it is magically up there. Hooray! These three buttons here I made with these little universal guys down here. Uh, so this one, if you press it, that lights up. This one lights up and then that one lights up. So I'm using those three buttons down there and if you want to test out these guys you can test them out on this particular patch they stay lit up so BAM! There's eight of them and then uh, if you switch to the new scene they go off and you can light them up. Ta-da! So again this scene selector will change the functionality of these eight buttons here and these ones are the universal buttons that do not change when you switch scenes. I added a couple little pads to the bottom here, put some screws in to uh, make sure the lid was attached properly. You want to make sure that those are easily accessible uh, just in case you need to open it up to alter anything or fix anything. And then uh, right here, you see the USB guy goes right there and let's plug it in. Boink. Ah. LED lights up. Perfect for your feet. Doo, doo, doo. I'm gonna paint it a little bit better and uh, maybe, maybe make some funky designs on it. I'm gonna put some numbers here to go with the LEDs. But other than that, it's good to go. It's ready. Uh, it's you know plugged into the computer right now and uh, it's ready to be MIDI mapped. And there you have it, y'all. How have I built this little guy? If you've built any kind of controller on your own, please send me your video responses. I'd love to check out what everybody else out there in the internet world is doing as far as homemade DIY controllers. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you learned something, and hopefully I'll see you on the road. Lucas Carpenter. Building stuff. Lucas Carpenter. That's me. I make stuff. I build it.